Thanks, Anthony. And, oh, there's my paper. And whoever you are, and wherever you may be on your own life spiritual journey, you are most definitely welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church, a part of the United Church of Christ. And I echo what Crystal said about the flowers. Congratulations on being here today. Um, this is this humidity and the heat we've had this week. Um, it says a lot that you're still here for us to worship. And so I appreciate that. Um, also, I don't know if you're um, of the age and remember and used to like the, the show Kung Fu. Uh, but I remember that one time, this, this Kung Fu, what was his name? Kane something? I, what was, what, was it just Kane? All right, Kane. And so he was thrown into some prison and they, they threw him in one of those hot boxes. And maybe you've seen in all those old westerns, they had those hot boxes and they would throw these guys in there for punishment and they'd come out and they'd be barely alive, you know, sweating, dehydration, everything else. They pull Kane out of the hot box and he's, you know, fine, no problem at all because he just told his mind that it wasn't hot, that it was like a nice, cool, you know, relaxing time in the hot box. And so try that. You know, maybe it'll work. I got this fan on up here. I got my ice vest on. And so I'm going to make believe I'm cold up here. And maybe we'll see how that works. But I, uh, I do appreciate you being here on this kind of day. And also, thank you to Anthony. I think Come Thou Long Expected Jesus is an Advent hymn. Uh, at least I associate with that with Advent. So that kind of sets the mood too. So with all of that said, let us now turn to our opening hymn and candle lighting, red hymnal number eight, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Come with joy and gladness to praise and honor our God. Come to the refreshing waters provided in our time of worship. Give ear, all people, to the ways of God made manifest in Jesus. Give thanks for the guidance Christ provides every day. Come, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens of every sort. Come, for Jesus has promised to give us rest. Now coming together for our unison prayer with those here present, those at home, and later those on FCAT. So our unison prayer. We come together, gracious Savior, because we have heard your invitation. We sense that you alone know the full extent of the burdens we carry in our hearts and souls and also in our bodies. You understand our weariness. Sometimes our journey seems long and uncertain. We desire the refreshment you provide us during our time shared as this congregation. The anticipation of this hour of spiritual oasis fills us with renewed hope and strength. We thank you, Jesus, that you come to us, not because we are more worthy than others, but because we open ourselves to your continuing presence and revelation. Open our hearts, minds, and souls to receive all that you offer. Amen.
<laughs> nice message. <laughs> Would any of our kids like to come up or? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share a, just a quick message. And the message, let's see if I can get this out. Oh, hello there. So, a guy gave me this. You know what this is, right? You, it's a brick. And the reason he gave me the brick is because it has P-R-A-Y. And I guess there was a Prey Corporation that made bricks. And so he gave me this Prey brick. And maybe it weighs five pounds. You want to hold that? I won't let it go. But see how heavy that is? Okay. That's kind of heavy. And, you know, it, it's heavy, but I think I can hold it for a while. But I don't think I could hold it out for too long. My arm would get tired. My muscles aren't big enough. And pretty soon that prey brick would start to get in too much of a burden. And it would keep falling down. I wouldn't be able to keep it up here. And we're going to hear a gospel today. And Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And so what he's saying is that when your burdens get to be too much, you can maybe hold on to them for a while, but eventually you just don't have enough strength to get it up there. And then Jesus is, says, you come to me and I'll help you. Now I got a picture I want to show you. Let's see if you can make this out because sometimes it's not easy to see. Can you see what, can you figure out what that picture is? Um, I think a hand. Yep, that's a hand statue. And do you know what that is? A tree. A tree. So here, you know, off the picture is the trunk of the tree. And then there's this really, really big, heavy limb growing sideways for some reason. And then it starts to grow up straight again. And so the town said, this branch isn't going to survive. It's going to break off of the trunk because this is too heavy. So they built a little statue. And the statue's got a base and it's got a hand. And the hand is holding up the limb of the tree because the tree can't do it on its own. So the hand is there to help hold up that branch of the tree so it doesn't break and die. And so that's the same message that Jesus says. Sometimes we got things in our lives, even really young lives, that are just like too much to hold out there on our own. And when they get to be too much, Jesus says, you come to me and I'll help you hold that up. Okay, so that's why we come to church and that's why we say our prayers and all that kind of stuff because when Jesus says it gets a little bit too heavy and we can't hold it up anymore, I'm there for you, okay? So you count on Jesus like that, okay? All right, you enjoy the rest of church and I'm going to put my pray brick away.
Thanks, Anthony. It's now time for us to share in our joys and our celebrations and our concerns. And let us offer prayers uh, for the nation of Ukraine. I think I saw on the news today that today is the 500th day of that war uh, since uh, Russia crossed the border into Ukraine. So let us pray for all those people who are suffering and that somehow uh, these two nations and the world can find a way to peace there. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism and also prayers for all in the world who are suffering through this historic heat and climate change. Um, I don't know how scientists do it, maybe through tree rings or I don't know exactly how, but they said this past week was the hottest in 125,000 years. And worldwide, with the records that they actually do have, it did break all kinds of records worldwide. So we pray for all those people who don't have the benefits of being in, at least in a northern climate, fans, AC, or something like that. I see those people working outside, and, and boy, my heart goes out to them. They're a lot tougher than I am. So prayers for all those people who've been affected by the heat and climate change. And also prayers for Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson. And Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson was just elected this past week uh, to lead the United Church of Christ as our general minister and president. And so we pray for Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson and also for her successful ministry. Because even though she's at the top of the UCC, what she does filters down right here to Sunderland Congregational Church. So prayers for Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson. Um, are there any joys, celebrations, concerns anybody would like to offer from here in the church or even at home? Yes, Kathy. The, the, the man who lived in that house, he passed it. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any other joys, celebrations, concerns? Anybody at home? All set? Okay, then let us turn to our yellow sheet and offer the prayers for those listed there. So prayers for Alan, Alice, Anne, Antonia, and family, Art, Barbara, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Frank, Frank, Grayson, Hayden, Jeff, John, John, Kathy, Kevin, Lauren, Marcia, Martha, Mary Jane, Michelle, Mike, Paula, Pauline, Prue and Bart, Sabrina, Sandra, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence anywhere in the world, those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and we pray for peace on earth. Now may we turn inward for just a few moments of silence to offer God those prayers and petitions that we choose just not to say out loud. So just a few moments of silence. Holy God, in whose presence we find joyous delight, may we learn from Jesus to share with one another our burdens, and so also may we pick up their burdens when we are able, to extend to those with heavy burdens our help and comfort in time of distress, and also expect and welcome the same in return when we need it. We also ask that we might be united across time and space in the community of this mutual caring where you reign powerfully among us when we live as you once lived, caring for everyone. We also ask that you hear the prayers that we have shared with you and that they also may be answered as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. been blessed with an abundance that most in the world they can only dream of and too often we take it for granted. May we be thankful for these extraordinary gifts that for us sometimes are ordinary gifts and may our gratitude overflow as we express our thanks to God through our offerings to this God's church and as we support the support of our worship and our ministries as a congregation let us remember those whose lives are heavily burdened reaching out to them with also practical acts of mercy. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. Accept, O Lord, these offerings now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. We will hear in the gospel that Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Through your donations that allow this church to be here, we share that message of Jesus still 2,000 years later. We offer us the spiritual uplift that is worship, the, be, the ability to check, or to check our lives, all the, the burdens, and give them over to Jesus, and that allows us to continue in ways that we would not be able to otherwise. And also through our generosity, through the schools and everything else, we also reach out beyond these walls to uplift those who are in desperate need through our gifts. So for all of you who continue to support this church, God bless you, and may God bless these gifts so they may continue to be Jesus' presence here. And today's reflecting hymn is from the Blue Hymnal, number 68, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
And today's gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, and then 25 through 30. And Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed for you, and you did not mourn. For John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. And the Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And at that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Therefore come to me, all you that are weary and are, he and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. One of the most popular programs on PBS is that show, Antiques Roadshow. And, you know, it's been on, the, on television for 28 years now. That's an awfully long time. And people keep bringing their hidden treasures for appraisal. And most of the time, that word treasures, you know, it just doesn't translate into a monetary windfall. And even when it does, when somebody comes across a real gem, only 1% of the people for 28 seasons on Antiques Roadshow, 1% will actually part with what they've brought in. There's a connection there so that even if they're offered a ton of money, they still hold on to what they have. So whether it's a previously unrecognized Rembrandt, and that actually happened to one lucky family, or a piece of great-grandmother's now recognized costume jewelry that really isn't worth a lot, the sentimental value is more often than not outweighed than anything that somebody would offer to take that away from them. So the connection that that item, whether it's a Rembrandt or a piece of costume jewelry, it connects you to a memory to a person, and no matter how much money somebody offers, only 1% accept the offer. 99% keep the memory. And here's a somewhat similar story. Will Dowd wrote about his father's retirement, and his father was a federal investigator. And his kids bought him a kayak, thinking, oh, he's going to enjoy his, his retirement. He's going to go out on the lake. He's going to fish in this kayak every day. He's going to enjoy himself. Instead, the father went into his basement, and he set up an office down there. And the father, he went back in time through you know, all these skills he has as a federal investigator, and he traced his family tree. The Irish famine sent ancestors everywhere in the world. And all those connections, they got broken. But this federal investigator had remarkable progress in tracking down people. And with each additional ancestor, someone who was dead, the living relatives grew that much larger. So Will Dowd writes in the Boston Globe magazine, as it turns out, my father was never chasing the dead. He was chasing the living. His research will prove that everyone gathered in the function hall for our family reunion were all linked by blood. We may be strangers to each other. Remember, there were broken connections. People have gone in every which direction. They don't even know what each other looks like. So we may be strangers to each other, but his research will show beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are family, his family. So whether through some handed down heirloom that may or most likely may not be worth very much or through some newly discovered distant cousin, people appreciate the bonds that hold them together. And when we discover those connections that we never realized were there, those connections that hold us together, that revelation of connection can be so exciting that it actually just goes right over all the differences that we tend to emphasize that separate us. When they can see for the first time the connections, that they are really united more than they're not, all of a sudden people come together in ways that you would never expect without someone pointing out the connection. And that is not extraordinary. 
You know, that's the very definition of ordinary. Remember from that Antiques Roadshow, only 1% of the people for 28 seasons gave up either their treasure or their, what they thought was treasure and sold it. 99% kept all of those mementos because those mementos meant something more than the money they could get. 99% is basically everyone. So the ordinary is, is that connection is really significant to all of us. And what Jesus tries to tease out in his life, his ministry, and also his message is this ordinary response that we discover when we have connections with other people. But Jesus makes it extraordinary because he doesn't just see those connections in obvious ways. You know, my cousin or my neighbor or, you know, somebody I worked with. Jesus sees those connections in everybody, everywhere. No matter what we look like, no matter how much money we have or don't have, where we come from, Jesus sees those connections that we don't. And kind of like that retired federal investigator, you know, who revealed family connections that had been broken and disappeared long generations ago, Jesus expands that revelation to include everyone so that we see the connections that really, in Jesus' eyes, bring the whole world together. Remember little Rosa Parks, the black woman who wouldn't give up her seat because some white guy wanted to sit down? So Rosa Parks, you know, who's this icon of, of this racial justice movement, she doesn't talk about black or white. She once says, I believe there's only one race, the human race. And I think when Jesus heard Rosa Parks say that, he shook his head in agreement. And this is the reality that inspires Jesus in today's gospel to say, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say, you know, only you people up in Nazareth. He doesn't say only you Jewish people and not you Gentiles. Jesus says, all of you come to me who are heavy burdened, and, and I will give you rest. So for Jesus, this is important. Everyone matters. Come to me, all of you who are weary. And, you know, that's an irreplaceable gift because sometimes in life when we just don't have the hope in ourselves to be able to continue, we have faith and all of a sudden there's that gift that we can continue, that Jesus gives us hope, that Jesus, like that picture I was showing, is that, that statue and arm holding up that heavy limb that would break otherwise. Jesus is there when we can't do it on our own, and that is an irreplaceable gift. And this is one of the most important pastoral messages I think there is. And that's why, you know, to visit the sick and the homebound, the hospitalized and the dying, it is so important because when people are at their weakest, when they don't have hope, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, like that statue, I will help you, I will carry that with you, I will give you rest. That message has to be shared. And that's one of the reasons that coming to church and building a faith is such a blessing. But Jesus doesn't stop with what Jesus does for us. Jesus is always going to ask us to follow in his footsteps. So he follows up with how he is connected with all of us. And his second message is, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Now English, like other languages, you know, other languages allow you to have a singular you and a plural you. In English, it's just you, whether I'm talking about you or all of you. It's just you. But in the Greek that the Bible is written in, there is a single you and a plural you. And when it says, take my yoke upon you, that means not just like me or you. It means all of us, you plural. So take my yoke upon you in the plural. And with this in mind, well, the imagery of the yoke is not famous anymore. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a yoke you know, the idea of a yoked oxen is you take two of these big, burly beasts, you yoke them together, and then through the hand of the driver, you can lead these oxen where they need to go in the field or down the road or whatever. But that's what a yoke does. And a yoke is not singular. Yoke is plural. So Jesus' imagery of the yoke upon you is that we work together led by Jesus' hand. Learn from me, he says, is the call to imitate Jesus when he says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. So like that federal investigator revealed unseen connections, so does Jesus. And when all of us see like Jesus sees and we put on that yoke, all of us sharing that same burden, then all of a sudden the yoke becomes easy and the burden light because it's shared amongst all of us. 
things that we can't do on our own, we can do together. And what a glorious world this could be if we would only see as Jesus sees. And not only because of what Jesus does, but because of what Jesus inspires us to do. So adapting Will Dowd's words about his father's work on the family tree, we may be strangers to each other. We may not know all the people that we're going to help or be able to help, but Jesus shows us beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are all family. We are all his family. So may this insight inspire us to hope in Jesus when hope in our lives is hard to come by and also to care for one another when they have nothing to hope in and maybe we can be Jesus' presence in their lives and for them. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our hymn of closing today is from the Blue Hymnal, number 504, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. We were, supposed, I, we were supposed to do the refrain after each verse. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, next, next time I'll get that, all right.
<laughs> start, start over. All right, yeah, start over, Anthony. Yeah. So again, thank you very much for coming out on this really uncomfortable uh, summer Sunday morning, and I do hope you have a blessed rest of your day and a blessed week ahead of you. And uh, let us now turn for our benediction, and then after the benediction, our congregational response. It is a blessing to be able to count on Jesus when everything else is simply not enough. When life is hard and the world is confusing, Jesus sneaks in just a little bit closer. We encounter him in unexpected places, and he surprises us at unexpected times. So let us trust in this and find our strength. Let us be strong in our trust in God and in our faith, so that we may take Christ's yoke upon us. May we find rest and renewal in Jesus, and may we allow Christ to work through us to help those who are suffering and who are discouraged. And in this spirit, let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do among all whom we may meet. Amen.